What should we talk about today? Stroke rehab? Didn't we just talk about that? We're only on case five? Oh. Dr. Bruno will make you a BMNR superstar. A 73-year-old male suffered a stroke. He was found to have dysphagia and later developed aspiration pneumonia. In which phase of swallowing did he most likely aspirate? Was it A, the oral preparatory phase, B, the oral phase, C, the pharyngeal phase, or D, the esophageal phase? Guys, who wants to talk about swallow function? Me? Sure. Why not? I want to talk about dysphagia because it's very common after strokes and especially brainstem strokes. Do you guys remember back in case number three when we talked about the brainstem and especially the medulla? Mmm, don't remember? Let's take a look. So let's look at the medulla that carries cranial nerves 12, 9, and 10. All essential nerves in swallow function. And yes, each cranial nerve serves several purposes, but it's important to know some key ones, like cranial nerve 12 innervates the tongue muscles, cranial nerve 9 provides sensation to the pharynx, while cranial nerve 10 innervates muscles along the entire pathway. So here's the general overview of swallowing. Oral phases are voluntary, and the pharyngeal and esophageal phases are reflexes. And of course, the overall goal is to get the food into the belly and away from the lungs. And so next, of course, we have to look at anatomy. And so this white tube encompasses the pharynx, right? There's three parts to it. The nasopharynx coming from the nose, the oropharynx coming from the mouth, and the distal segment, which is the hypopharynx, right before food either goes into the larynx, the trachea, and the lungs, or the esophagus. So are you wondering how we shake off that stroke and get back to eating that Thanksgiving turducken? Well, we test that swallow. No, not Austria's national bird. It's majestic. I'm talking about chowing down. Well, we start with a bedside swallow. Yes, we hand the patient a large burrito from Chipotle. Or, uh, I mean, a little bit of water and some food with different consistencies. And then we look for signs of aspiration. What signs would those be? We're looking for maybe a wet voice, or cough, or an abnormal gag reflex. But really, in practice, aspiration is very frequently missed on bedside swallow. So, how do we go about and increase that sensitivity? Well, with two methods. The first being the modified barium swallow. This is where liquid and solids and delicious barium are swallowed and visualized under fluoroscopy so any abnormalities in swallowing function can be pinpointed. You can also attempt compensatory strategies here to see if that will suffice or if more invasive measures for feeding are needed. Option number two is the fiber optic endoscopic evaluation of swallowing or fees. Basically, they take a camera and stick it up your nose and down your throat. Mm, sign me up. But hey, it doesn't expose the patient to radiation, and it doesn't require C-arm, so it can really be performed almost anywhere. But one of the most important aspects is that it gives you a more detailed evaluation of the pharyngeal phase. Hmm, I wonder why that's important. So what happens in the other phases? Well, the oral preparatory phase is a voluntary phase when you start chewing your food and mixing it with saliva. Gross. Watch out for pocketing or drooling here in this phase. And next is the oral phase, which is also voluntary, and lasts less than one second. It's where the tongue helps to push the food back towards the oropharynx, and the soft palate elevates to close the nasopharynx, so you don't go shooting milk out your nose. Gross, gross. And next is the pharyngeal phase, a reflex phase, where the food goes from the mouth to the esophagus. Yes, this, this is where aspiration will most likely occur, because... There's so many moving parts here that all need to be coordinated in order to have a successful swallow function. This is just a brief summary, but you should know that what's supposed to happen is laryngeal elevation, enfolding of the epiglottis to protect the airway, as well as adduction of the vocal cords to protect the airway. And finally, you need to have coordinated pharyngeal constriction 
in cricopharyngeal relaxation. Cricopharyngeus muscle is basically the sphincter of the upper esophagus. So basically it's gonna look like this. The pharynx is constricting to keep pushing the food bolus downwards while at the same time the cricopharyngeus muscle relaxes to open up the esophagus. And lastly, the esophageal phase is the longest phase where food goes from the pharynx to the esophagus and finally to the stomach. This phase can certainly give you heartburn. And so can my spicy bean jelly. First heartburn, then fartburn. So how do we treat all this? With compensatory strategies, of course. The chin tuck method helps the larynx move forward. And head rotation to the paretic side will also help close the ipsilateral pharynx. You can also use a supraglottic swallow where you hold your breath in order to close the vocal folds and then you can swallow. Go ahead and try it. It's not weird at all. And there's also Mendelssohn maneuver where you physically or manually hold your larynx up to keep the cricopharyngeal opening open. Really Mendelssohn? Really? Holy Mendelssohn, this is a long video. What's the answer? It's C, pharyngeal phase. Wow, I'm just happy that we didn't get stuck on this one. Because that really would have been a hard pill to swallow. But really, your hard work has been very aspirational. I'll keep going with this. If you don't like and subscribe, I will keep going. I don't want to do this, but I will keep going with this. I swear, I swear to God.